All right, soil chemistry. So we're going to focus in on two aspects of soil chemistry, that soil pH and soil CEC, or cation exchange capacity. Soil pH can range usually from about 3.5 to 10.5 in soils. Uh, we typically see a soil pH about 5 to 8, though. Uh, can be defined as the relative concentration of hydrogen ions and the hydroxide ions as well. Um, so these are kind of inversely related, so as the hydrogen ions increase, hydroxide ions decrease. pH is important for nutrient availability. Um, other elemental solubility, usually in terms of uh, elements that can be toxic to plant growth. Uh, the population activity of soil organisms is influenced by soil pH and root cell function leading to water and nutrient uptake as well. So here is a graph depicting soil pH um, at a point pH of 7. We are considered neutral. And then um, the graph goes from 1 to 14. So this is kind of a snapshot of really where most of our soils will be found. And again, at a pH of 7, we have a balance of hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. So if, a, if the hydrogen ion concentration is 10 to the negative 7th, then what is the pH? Um, with hydrogen, it's easy. It's just a pH of 7. So if our um, hydrogen ion was 10 to the negative 6, we'd have a pH of 6. And so that is how the scale works. Uh, it's also important to point out that it's a logarithmic scale. And so each one of these jumps is 10. So um, you know, if we have a pH of 6 and we go to a pH of 7, we just jumped 10-fold. And so then to go to pH of 8, pH of 8 um, is 100 times the hydrox, um, hydrogen ions as a pH of 6 or 100 times the hydroxide ions as a pH of 6. So the further our change goes, sort of the exponential growth in that logarithmic growth in that um, difference. Sources of hydrogen, uh, carbonic acid from uh, the air, atmospheric deposition, uh, acids from biological metabolism, organic matter, oxidation of certain elements, acid rain, uh, plants can uptake cations, causing a charge imbalance in the soil, um, and then also the hydrolysis of aluminum. Aluminum becomes important um, at lower soil pHs. So uh, how does acidity form in the soil? Uh, from the leaching of bases, if our soil has a low cation exchange capacity, then we can, um, and higher rainfall, we can lose bases from soil formation, uh, plant and microbial respiration. Again, plants can uptake um, bases uh, or also give off hydrogen ions when taking in other elements. Um, weathering of certain minerals and nitrogen fertilizers can also um, increase the acidity in the soil. So basic formation can be driven by plants pumping base cations. So a um, good example of this is sugar maple. Another example is uh, tilia or linden. Um, that's why it's known as lime tree over in like the UK and Europe because uh, the soil underneath linden trees or linden forests uh, will actually be more basic than say under a uh, conifer forest. In urban soils, urban development uh, can be a big driver of soil basic formation. This can be from the use of basic materials. So if we think of runoff of cement or cement washout locations, as well as the removal of topsoil. So that topsoil, that A horizon, usually has more organic matter um, and is usually more acidic to begin with. We remove that, leaving um, a base material that's often high in carbonates and just more basic. Importance of pH in soils, so pH dependent charge uh, influences 
CAC, or cation exchange availability, and nutrients. Uh, pH is important for plant and microbial activity, as well as the con corrosion of structures. Again, some of that cement and things um, can be easily more easily corroded depending on soil pH. Uh, nutrient availability, soil organisms, and both the type of organisms and how well they can operate. Uh, I mentioned the toxicity of some elements such as iron, aluminum in uh, acidic soils, and then the pH preference of plants. So it's a, it's a range. Um, certain plants prefer different pHs and we can see sort of naturally where they grow um, can be affected by the soil pH. So this is a really important figure that I want you all to learn. Um, if you're ever at a conference or anyone's talking and this comes up, hopefully it'll all be in your mind what you're seeing. So uh, this is nutrient availability based on soil pH. So here we have a pH of 7. And the wider the bar, or more green it is, the more available that nutrient is at that pH. So we can see that most of our nutrients are most available in the 6.5 to 7 range. And that's, um, in general, where we want to manage our soil pH if possible. As we get higher, say up into the 8 range, we see uh, iron deficiency, boron deficiency, copper and zinc deficiency, calcium deficiency, and phosphorus as well. This is why we see a lot of iron-induced or manganese-induced chlorosis in urban soils in 7.5 to 8.5 pHs is because of the availability. And again, that's availability. So it's in the soil, it's just not plant available. It's tied up um, in the soil in a form that the plant can't use. So soil acidity, uh, we reduce exchangeable uh, calcium and magnesium reduces cation exchange capacity. Below a pH of 5.5, hydrogen occupies the EC sites, so the soil can't hold a lot of the base cations that um, plants use as essential elements. And at a pH of 4.0 and down there, uh, aluminum can become toxic. And so here is another chart uh, of herbaceous plants and trees and shrubs on the left and sort of their ideal pH range. So we have pH of 4 to 7. And again we can see some common urban trees, uh, birch, white pine, red pine, hemlock, um, aspen, white spruce, black locust. So a lot of our trees prefer a pH of below 7. Here are two four graphs. Um, on the left here we have length of cotton roots and on the bottom soil pH and exchangeable aluminum. So we see an inverse relationship between aluminum availability and root growth uh, related to soil pH. So as po soil pH increases, uh, exchangeable aluminum decreases and root length increases. And then uh, same thing over here except with manganese, and soil pH. So buffer capacity is the ability of the soil to resist change. Uh, basic soils are often high in calcium, magnesium, and potassium oxides, and carbonates. Um, CO3 carbonates is something you'll see a lot in urban presentations. Acidic soils um, are often high in aluminum oxides. And so these are what's driving that soil's buffering capacity. Uh, again, uh, buffering capacity is the ability to resist change. And in most soils, um, important things that are being changed are organic matter content, uh, mineral weathering, and exchangeable reactions. So buffer capacity is related to texture. And by that, we're thinking surface area. So if we have an increase in surface area, we have an increase in buffer capacity. So our clays are highly buffered. Soils with really high organic matter are highly buffered. But our sandy soils have a pretty low buffering capacity. So it's much easier to change the acidity of a sandy soil than it is of a clay soil. 
Uh, one place where this can become important for natural resource or land management is if you think of mining reclamation. A lot of times those mining tailings have been treated with sulfur to extract the minerals that they're looking for, and the pH can be uh, from 2 to 3.5, which is incredibly low. And so the idea of just piling them up there and letting nature take its course or trying to plant something on top of them uh, becomes really difficult without capping it with a growing medium that plants can um, use. So it's difficult to reclaim and we end up with acidic sulfate soils. And so um, trying to find plants that can grow in there or trying to uh, amend them with organic matter or like I said, a, a cap of another kind of soil that things can actually grow in uh, becomes really important. Limine rates. So limine rates vary based on the initial soil pH and soil texture. And that's what this graph is showing. We'll talk more about limine in later videos where we talk about nutrient management and we'll revisit pH then again as well. Cation exchange capacity uh, is the total cation exchange charges a soil can absorb. Uh, how I was taught and what makes sense to me is if we think of a parking lot, so the small parking, smaller the parking lot, the lower our cation exchange capacity, and it just means that we have a decreased ability to fit cars. So in this case, the cars are our cations. If our parking lot was only, you know, one aisle wide, we'd have a low cation exchange capacity and a low ability to hold cations. But if we have a whole large parking lot that's four aisles wide, we have a higher cation exchange capacity and a higher ability to store cations. And these links here are two YouTube videos that uh, help explain this idea as well. So why do we care about cations and anions? Um, a lot of our cations are plant nutrients. So we can run down this list and see you know, really important things that obviously plants need calcium, uh, copper, uh, ammonium for the nitrogen, potassium, magnesium, manganese, nickel. Um, all these are essential elements. And then the ones, the other ones listed here can become toxic, whether to animals and plants. And so the acidity of the soil can alter the toxin availability to plants and animals. So soil chemical properties are critical for nutrient management. Um, you need to focus on plant availability based on pH, uh, nutrient storage based on cation exchange capacity, and then plant and animal toxins as well.